So, good morning or uh, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, we're gathered today here to have a discussion about MSMEs, and in particular digital, to mark um, MSME Day. So we're very fortunate to have a number of successful entrepreneurs here uh, with us, who I'll be introducing to you in a moment. Uh, but first, I'd like to uh, uh, start with uh, Mr. Zhang, who is president of Alibaba.com. And I'd like to ask you, if I may, uh, uh, what's been your perspective on these decades of growth uh, that we've seen in e-commerce? Obviously, uh, it's been a, uh, an amazing rise in the last uh, 20 years of the use of e-commerce, in particular uh, B2B. What are the kinds of trends that you have seen? And given this is MSME Day, how important is that to MSMEs? So I think the first thing for the last 20 years is the digital transma transformation. So since the internet come and uh, there's a lot of kind of tools based on digital, now the people, especially for the SMEs, so they are lower the barrier to go to the kind of a global platform and lower the barrier to do trade with each other. So they start from meeting with each other uh, on platform. Mm -hmm. And then they start to trade with each other, like the online payment, like the digital kind of logistics, and also based on their data, they build trust with each other. And now with the power of AI, actually they, we uh, help them to work more efficiently and more intelligently on the platform as well. So that is uh, what we see for the last 20 years. And based on the digital transformation, more and more customers, more and more SMEs are participating in the kind of global trade. Take uh, China and Europe, for example. So China, when Alibaba.com started in 1999, there's only 1.5 of the total GDP of export contributed by the SMEs, the private companies. And now that number grows to 62%. So it's more than half of the GDP export is based on, is contributed by SMEs and the private companies. And for Europe, I think Europe and the US, that number is go to up to one third of the entire trading. So a great kind of economy is now uh, contributed by the SMEs and based on the digital transformation. So that's the C that we see. Right. So at the beginning of this, if we go back to it, there were there were um, the beginnings of digital. So in the twentieth century, this was. Would you think that this was limited to large companies at that time? Uh, they were making specific investments, and they were the ones to make these first steps. Is is that true? And you know, I think the story that you that we're seeing here is the rise of the importance of SMEs in this in this international trade. What's happened to make that possible? that this has been more accessible to smaller companies. What's happened over that space of time to really make this something that has empowered small companies? Yeah, sure. So when you think about the smart companies, the, when they go global, actually, they will face a lot of the challenges, like how to identify their target market and how to identify their customers. And since the, the fundamental thing for the global trade is uh, supply and demand, and digital can help them to understand the world better and can meet and kind of uh, treat each other better. And it lowers the barrier a lot. So then all the kind of uh, small and medium business, they probably started uh, kind of do their business locally. And now it's very easy to go on a platform to do growth globally. And then with the help of uh, the modern technology like AI, they kind of uh, lower the barrier for their culture, for their kind of language communication. So it's easy for, like, say, the people from it, uh, India, Africa, Italy to kind of trade with each other. So they don't need to know the language barriers and they don't need to stay up very late in the night because that we have this kind of tools to help them. So uh, with the help of the tools and lower the barriers, so now more and more kind of SMEs can participate in the global platform. And I think the number one since driving that is about the entrepreneurship. So they want to do, they want to build things, they want to grow their business, and with the help of these tools, actually, we accelerate everything. But can they really be competitive? I mean, this is a problem that we often see, uh, you know, the big 
uh, platforms, of, of which uh, uh, you are one of them, the, the most uh, well-known, have this reputation for being very price competitive, very tough. Is that really a business that small businesses can 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 enter into? Is it, or it's it's still a game for the big uh, the big companies? Right. I think there uh, in here there are three entrepreneurs who can hear from their stories. But from my perspective, so every actually company, uh, especially for the SMEs, they are more close to their market, and they are more kind of understanding of their product, what their product is strength for and who are their audience customers, and they are very diligent actually to, to serve their customers since they are agile and adapt to the change to the market. We believe that, that they have their kind of own uh, competency in this uh, great platform. And for take Alibaba as example, now we serve more than 200,000 of customers. Mm. Majority of them are SMEs. It's not kind of Fortune 500 Kind of companies and from day one, our kind of mission vision is that we want to help SMEs to do business anywhere. And now we we see that it's a very success platform, and we see a lot of success case on this platform as well. Okay, thank you very much. So I think indeed this is a good segue now to bring in our entrepreneurs, uh, which have joined us here for this discussion. So I will should I should probably start uh, from 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 the left-hand side and uh, 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 mention Stephen and then Newport and uh, Maria. So perhaps what, what we can do is just make a very, you know, who are we from and the company and then we'll come back and I think explore a little bit some of these themes. So Right, uh, so a little bit introduction about uh, myself. Um, my name is Stephen To. We are an electric fan manufacturer in Vietnam since 1996. So it's been a very traditional business that is uh, run by my family. And I am the second generation that is going to learn uh, and, and take over the business. So digital transformation has been one of my strategy to um, sustain and grow my family business. Perfect. So. This is Nupur Goel Munga. Uh, my company name is Pink V. I'm from India. Uh, our company specializes in handmade room and accessories. And we have all, um, we have Indian artisans who make it. My company owns around, have around uh, 100 artisans and we are expanding it to around uh, 1000 artisans. Um, we started from e-commerce itself and then we started from trading and now we have our own manufacturing unit. It just happened because of digitaliz digitalization and e-commerce. Thank you. Maria. Yes, thank you for this question because I'm very a fan of digital. Actually, I'm Maria Francesca Cetti. I'm the CEO of Delta Pharma, a pharmaceutical company, uh, an Italian pharmaceutical company. I uh, started working in this company when actually it was near bankruptcy, so it was awful. And I make, uh, yes, uh, digital, my strategy actually to save it. And I uh, make a shift, I made a shift from a very old style company to a very digitalized and fully digitalized company. And actually it wasn't so easy because like you uh, said before, even uh, Italy, which is not a developing country, but um, most of SMA are so digital. I mean, because um, most of uh, these uh, small businesses are run by old people and um, most of them are artisan, so they don't know anything about digital and especially for international trade, they don't know languages, they are scared, basically they are scared. So I really had to um, transform actually my products since a very medical oriented product with prescription to a more uh, um, customer oriented product so that I could onboard the uh, platform uh, and um, B2B platform, uh, B2C platform uh, and uh, to make people know the product because you know in the last years um, my company makes these food supplements and uh, people are aware of uh, maintaining their health especially after COVID. So for us, digital was basically vital. Right. So thank you, Marit. So we hear a testimonial about the importance of this. We hear a business, I think Maria has said, that digital, digital has been the basis of that. So I wanted to explore that perhaps. 
a little bit back, perhaps with um, your point, Stephen, to say how what changes that made to you uh, these possibilities of digital and e-commerce. How is that? Or I can start. Yes. Okay. So for my case is that um, being in the traditional business for a twenty plus year, um, it has been in a very competitive market in Vietnam for electric fans. So when I came back from um, studying overseas, which is America, where digital transformation is everywhere, um, people selling online, um, sourcing from all around the world. And that is my first idea uh, coming back to Vietnam. How can I let people know my product? If they don't know my product, how am I going to sell to them? Okay. Yeah. So in this um, like digital uh, era, um, being online presence, is meaning equal to, hey, I know your assistant, you can sell your product. Right. If they don't know your assistant, you basically not, um, you basically just in your local area. So um, with um, transforming into digital um, transformation, especially here in e-commerce, I was able to expose my business to the world and not knowing which market I'm, I am going to sell yet but receiving inquiries from those markets let me have a general idea of, okay, how is markets in different continents look like um, for my product uh, specifically? Okay, Stephen, thanks. So we hear that you, you experienced a very advanced market, I think in that case, the US, and you brought that back home to Vietnam. You put, is that, you also, I think, have made something of a similar transition. How much of the learn, how much of this learning from, other places has been important to you about the digital part? Um, like I even I studied in Canada for uh, my post graduation. From there, I saw that the things we have in India, the in, the tradition we have in India, this art is not known anywhere, and it is beautiful. It should come to everywhere and worldwide. Uh, when I came back to India, then I saw that there are so many people. This is the old tradition that they are following, but they are not getting this platform. They are not able to sell it or show it anywhere in the world. So, so this was the thing which clicked me, and then I, um, I went online through e-commerce and then got those products online. This was the difference I saw uh, when I was in Canada and India that those uh, we have to get the reach of those products to everywhere, and that gap was filled by e-commerce. Right. Yeah. So was this sales when you, when you set up the platform, first of all, was that in India or with the first customers in India or were the first customers from outside of India? Um, I started with the customers from outside itself because it's the Indian art. So I wanted to show it to the people outside uh, India. Yes, not in India. So yeah. those those customers already understood e-commerce and had trust in, in, in what was in what in being able to buy from you. Yes. Actually, I went through the trusted platforms only, and uh, by chance, uh, we, we, we had to discuss there was language barriers, but there's so many softwares and so many things online that from Google Translator, I, I was able to translate basic languages, like my first customer, for example, uh, was from Las Palmas Islands, and she spoke That's only, fabulous. yeah, well, and I didn't Spanish. know these islands, and this, she, she spoke only Spanish, and I was only speaking Hindi and English, so I was able to translate and, you know, Okay, so when you're starting out and you're a small business, by definition, nobody's heard of you. You're beginning and you're small. So trust is a big problem, right? Making that first sale, making those contacts. Tell me a little bit about that. How do, how can you possibly uh, address this problem, getting those first customers? I can, yeah. I can answer this first. Yeah. So with my experience, um, going online, there's two ways for me to gain trust from my um, buyers. Number one is um, they found me on the platform and they text me and I text them back. I show them pictures of the company, show them pictures of my product, the production process, so they can understand of my size and my um, capability of quality control. So they can trust me. Hey, okay, I will get this price for this kind of quality. So if they need to make more, um, you know, um, decisions, they can come to my company. Uh, they can fly directly to Vietnam and visit my company. I'll take care of them and then show them around the company and show them the product. And then uh, from then we can sign contract and start production. Um, but an interesting fact that I would like to share is that 90% of my current customer 
overseas, they have not been to my company. Right. Sure. It's the same with me also, yes. Right. Exactly. exactly. 100% can say. Oh, yeah. yeah, 100%. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? Those digital relationships, how do they start? And how does somebody who's never met you, who just sees you in this digital world, how do they build confidence? So for me, I started from scratch. So the orders were very small. It was a proper SME. And then um, there are so many third-party gateways where we can get the payments. So... The, uh, the major thing was the payment thing for the customers. Right. The money doesn't get lost. So um, we used to get the money only after we sent them the products and the quality we had to keep the best. And all the pictures of our um, production, like he said, it is very important. And give them live, um, live videos of our um, production material, raw material. And so the most important was the payment gateways. As soon as they received the products, they trusted us, they saw the products are good, they released the payments, and that was the starting of uh, e com and the business for me. Oh, and, uh, you, you trusted them. Yes, yes, you have to trust them, then only mm -hmm. they will trust us. How long did that take you to get going? Um, yeah, approximately one year, you can say. Okay, yeah. so there were trials along the way of finding the right payment solution yes. and making that happen. And, you know, you had to develop trust in your customers as well because you had to send them goods that you'd not necessarily been paid for at first. But you have to, uh, you know, start with it. You have to put action because you, you believe in your product, you believe in your creativity, then you know that the customer will love it. You have to believe. <laughs> yes. And how do you get feedback from them? How do you make that, how do you make that engine get going? With those first customers and you supply them and you say with the security of a payment uh, platform and you supply them the quality, how do you make sure that that converts into more, even more business? Actually, for me, I, I keep talking to my customers a lot. It's, it is not only sale and purchase. I talked about their family, about the uh, about their, because my business is B2B. So I talk to them that, what are your customers? What is your area you're selling into? Right. So it is a trust build up in the beginning itself. Then I trust them that, okay, your payment will come to me later. And they, they love me in that case. Right. And then the, when the products are delivered to them, uh, feedbacks are mostly good. Uh, 90, uh, not 90%, but 70% they are good. And you collect those feedback and you yes. put them online, yes. online yes. where you can. Yes. Okay. Even, um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but in America or in other countries, like small countries also, uh, my customers all are connected now. I've connected them with each other. So that they can tell, okay, we are buying from this company, Nupur's company, and yeah, we trust her, so you can go ahead and buy. Yes. Right. I, that, that's, Maria, I don't know if you want to continue or give us some, it's a big topic, trust. Yeah. And it's always one of the most important things. It's always been important. As long as there's been trade, there's been trust. For people to trade, they need to trust. So there's a, in this digital era, we say 90% of the customers you've never met. So perhaps explore that a little bit more. What are the what are the ways of building trust? We heard about payments and we heard what what how have you done that in your business to build trust? Yeah, actually for me it was kind of different. Um I actually have two measures of trust. And the first one was my employees' trust, because as I told you before, people, you know, this company was bankruptcy. And I was young, a female with no experience in this field. So basically, no one trusted me. So um, in order to make people trust me, I lead by example. So I put myself in the platform. I learn how to use it, all the platform. I mean, speaking of international trade, uh, I made training to them. Uh, and I was on Alibaba myself with a counselor. And I started working on it. And basically, um, I started to gain requests as well. And I onboarded this platform in 2018. And actually, the first years wasn't so easy because, you know, with my products, I used to speak with a pharmaceutical company, quite big also. I remember one of my first customers was from uh, Libya, and actually it was awful because he, he, he didn't trust me. He wants, to, he wants to speak with my boss. He was like, okay, please let me speak with your boss. I was like, no, well, you can speak with me. No. Oh, you are so kind, but uh, really I need to speak with your boss because I need to make a negotiations. 
okay, I'm in charge, please speak with me. <laughs> so finally, you know, this for the first order was uh, less than 10,000 euro, but now um, these guys from Libya, it's one of my best uh, customer from export area. The last one was about five, 400,000 uh, euro. And actually he came to visit us several times. Yeah, differently from them. Uh, most of my customer, actually, they came to visit my facilities, my manufacturer, actually they want to visit Rome. So it's a kind of strategy. I mean, I make people come to Italy, come to Rome, visit Rome since our uh, headquarters is a very nice place in Rome. So, yes, I use it also to make trust because uh, they right. come to us, uh, visit Rome, visit our manufacturing plant. Uh, they really enjoyed it. So, and actually, I know also their family. Usually, they, they come to Rome with their family. So, we know each other. Actually, it's a win win business. So, we grew together, and uh, I think it's very nice. So, Italy and Rome as a sales arm, that's quite good. Yeah. So, I mean, I noticed that we hear, that we see here that the physical world has not completely disappeared, which is reassuring to all of us who live in the physical world, because we hear Stephen inviting his customers to come and see the factory. And I think you live in a very physical world with the, uh, the artisans producing. So although we move into this uh, digital world and we, you know, we're exploring some of the aspects of trust here, I'm sure there is uh, many more. Uh, there's also this business that entrepreneurs have always had, which I hear from you about care of customers, following up with customers, uh, making sure that uh, the customer themselves is happy and that they let other people know about yeah. it. So those are common secrets of success, I think, that maybe were before, even before digital. Now they perhaps have this increased importance in digital because people can find out about your bad reputation quite quickly. <laughs> yes, right? yes, yes. As well. So do I... So um, I want you to think about, you know, the impact of this a little bit on on the communities that, that, that you live in and uh, work in. You know, when we hear about the employees that you have and the ability to grow your business. How, what kind of impact has this change had that we heard from Mr. Chang at the beginning? The growth of digital, the fact that these small companies uh, succeed internationally. What impact do you think that has made for your business, your employees? And in fact, uh, uh, their families, their communities, the environment that they're in. Perhaps some, some word about that? Well, I can start. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to. The swap seats. Um, well, um, for my case, I was just using a small example. Um, during um, COVID-19, uh, where Ho Chi Minh City was in lockdown, so we couldn't go to work um, physically at the company or go to manufacturer at the factory. So um, during that time, when I was at home, I'm still working. I work online. I talk with customers where regions who are not like in lockdown, they're still working. They're still buying, they're still sourcing suppliers from around the world to get the products to their country. So luckily, while I was in lockdown, I was able to find a few customers uh, via live streaming um, on, on the platform like Alibaba.com. Um, so um i was able to get customers right after like we got released like so after the lockdown um our company didn't have to lay off any company uh, like employee we immediately go back into work um 100 percent um capacity so that was a small story for me to share um well it's a small story but i mean i think it's replicated many times over so actually it's a small story that becomes a big story uh People have seen that this digital world gives what, in our jargon, we'd say resilience. Shocks happen. You can find different customers or different suppliers, and that turns out to be a big thing right. as well. Any story of the new part that, I mean, the communities you work in and serve, how is that, how is this digital, the rise of digital been important? Um, actually, uh, rise of digital has impacted a lot on our community and even my customers also. Uh, I took Alibaba mem mem membership amidst co uh, COVID pandemic. And there, every store, when every offline store was closing, I just got an order, big order from America for the headbands we make. And I was finding 50 or more artisans to complete my project. And when I got this um, order, I, got, uh, I gave work to my 50 artisans. Then those 50 families survived through COVID pandemic. So it made a lot of difference and it started from there. 
and even uh, one of the major example is during that time one of my artisans didn't have money for the burial rice of his father so it really helped bring the money uh, we earned from um, getting orders from alibaba uh, to do their household things to for the family for their kids everything so it impacted a lot to our community and uh, then we picked up so in covid times when we had to sit at home and just work from laptop and computers i was able to crack so many orders i was able to get so many customers abroad and then we started increasing our production and supplying everywhere no uh, we were able to make survive many 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 families there so it impacted us a lot yes so do you see this time after covid as that having had made lasting changes that people have seen digital and seen these opportunities and in fact that shock really created a change Has there been a change? Yes, there has been a change. The the trust you were talking about now there's a trust on digital platforms and the um, and and all the e-commerce platforms also. Now they trust these platforms because they have used in COVID times. There was a habit which was made in COVID times that every everything should be ordered online. Right. No, you don't have to go anywhere physically. So this going physically has ended. I think everyone is very comfortable. Like it is not ended, but everyone we is very comfortable. We need to reinvent it, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now everyone is very comfortable going online, buying and selling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maria, does that reflect your experience? Yeah, basically yes. Also for us during COVID, you know, the increase of food supplements uh, was uh, under the eyes of well, everyone. So basically, yes, I hired new people instead of uh, putting them away, like most of the company were doing. But actually, uh, here I want to share another story about social because you know, in Italy we care a lot about social. We are very aware of the importance of our employees and so on. So. It happens that a friend of mine uh, works is in Adeco Foundation, which is a partner of uh, UNHCR. Mm-hmm. And uh, actually, they have this project of a refugee integration program. So basically, they help the refugee to find a new job, a new house, and also asylum seeker. So thanks to them, I met this amazing girl uh, who is from Libya, actually, and uh, she has a degree. in computer science so it's a very high profile so i put her immediately and working the platform and in digital and uh, actually um, she's from libya she's uh, she speaks arabic as you told you as <laughs> you told me before it's a very important language nowadays mm. and most of our com- almost of our companies uh, my partner are from uh, these arabic speaking countries so She really helped us to win over the barriers of uh, culture and languages. You know, now we send um, uh, Eid Mubarak for Ramadan and so on. And um, really, we really help them here to have a new house and a new life uh, in Rome. So it was really useful. So, okay, nice. Yeah. So at this point, I'm going to turn back to Mr. James and ask, I mean, um, you've, you've traveled a lot around the world. I mean, uh, and uh, uh, we've heard from the entrepreneurs today from different countries, these experience about how digital has changed uh, the way that they engage in, in business in a number of ways. I think there are various important aspects here, as well as the impacts on that community. How, how typical are these stories? Uh, that you've uh, that you've been hearing are the are these exceptions uh, or um, would you point to similar experience well as as i said on alibaba.com so now we serve 200,000 SMEs and uh, i should say each and every kind of companies so when they when uh, they uh, need to work and they need to uh, succeed on this platform or in their own battle actually determina- determination innovation and the resilience i think that these are the three very important characters for the smes who would like to win and you can see from the entrepreneurs today and many of them that we see the same kind of a spirit mm. out of that and the bi-level reaching the tools that we can help them 
and we can kind of uh, lower the barrier and improve the efficiency, I think they are going to be more and more powerful and more and more competitive on the platform. So that is a short answer to your question. Okay, so these th these represent our success cases, but of course behind them there are there are there are a lot of challenges that they've overcome, and mm -hmm. I think you're 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 alluding to what what are those challenges and um, what lessons can we offer to to companies uh, to small companies to follow this kind of model? How 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 to help them become successful? Yeah, sure. So talking about the challenges, there are a lot, especially for the for the small small ones. So as I said, the first is that you need to start from the demand and the supply side. What product do you have? What the competency in that? Who's your customers? Where to locate it, your target market? I think that is the that is the most important part. That's the first priority. And then the second is uh, leveraging whatever tools you have. For example, now we are building a network for the SMEs. So they can listing the product from their client customers and as well as they can leverage this platform to fulfill the payment. So like the extra payment. When you start a trade, so who should pay? Should I pay first or should I should you deliver first? Then the extra payment is kind of uh, in the way to help them to kind of better trust each other. And then about the delivery network, so it's a small company, it's hard for you to negotiate a, a kind of a good deal with all the free forwarders, kind of the shippers, the air, air can, can carriers, and then the platform can help you to kind of uh, get the best terms for all the SMEs. So like they can all be VIPs to these kind of uh, big logistic companies. And after all of that, the kind of uh, digital credit is very important for each of the uh, SMEs companies. So every trade that you made, actually every con conversations, so every happy customer's comments, actually they will add to your kind of digital credit. Then when the new customers come, they understand that you are kind of legit and you are doing a good business with your customers and you always kind of give them best services. They're trying to more trust you. And this going to be a flywheel to kind of uh, improve their uh, efficiency and, and uh, performances. And uh, using, since we are now entering a kind of uh, era of AI, so with the power of AI, so they are kind of uh, more easy to do the business online now. So for the sellers, we have a bunch of tools to improve the efficiencies. And for the buyers, actually, now the platform is not only a sourcing platform, it's a kind of an engine for creativities. So they can start from their own ideas, find their kind of suppliers, and to, to build their kind of dream product to choose. So all this kind of stuff can be automated by the new tools. Oh, so yes. it's a, yeah, so this is a, that's it, it's going to be a new era for all the SMEs. Okay, so what I heard is um, the particular need for small businesses to, to be analytical. I think you said this challenge of them understanding the products and markets and demand that are focusing it. And then I heard this challenge of payments, and I think this links back to the idea of trust. And we heard about logistics to be cost efficient with that and presumably reliable as well for these um, aspects of trust. And then I think we heard uh, customer testimonials, uh, the importance of making that work and linking it back. And then we hear of some exciting new potential which AI is going to bring uh, to automate some of these processes. So I think we'll come back a little bit on the topic of you know new technologies, but this seems uh, an exciting vision uh, for what we can do. But let me um, ask a question because um, is this for all companies? Because some of these things sound very advanced, those issues um sound already like uh, the entrepreneurs who can use them properly have some capabilities. Is that true? Is there a group of small businesses that we're leaving behind on 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 this? Um, and what can we do? I'm talking about the UN as well as partners like Alibaba. Um, what can we do to make sure that these opportunities you're talking about now can address a bigger population of businesses? Are some that struggle? 
Mm. Okay. So, uh, so we're not specifically talk about the AI tools, right? We'll talk about the how to kind of allocate and uh, let the most of the SMEs to leverage as much as possible. So we actually, ITC, we uh, collaborated with ITC for kind of a series of lectures for the SMEs, especially in the developing countries. I think we do that, we launched that in uh, Africa and the Central and the South of East Asia as well. And uh, for this year, I think we are going to give 500 different kind of lectures to all different uh, uh, SMEs in different regions. I believe that the kind of entrepreneurs here today is a, is a kind of part of our program as well. They are the ambassador for the digital in their area, like Maria in Italy and like Depo in India and like this gentleman in, in Vietnam as well. So they need to there need to be a kind of a leading examples so how we can leverage that and how we can make the kind of some companies successful i think that is a, one of the things that we can do together we call it uh, incubate so we need to incubate together to uh, let as much as possible the smes to understand the power of digitalization and how to leverage the tools to make their business more resilient and more kind of competitive and also we uh, keep kind of uh, innovating on our tools to make sure we uh, lower, lower the barrier. Mm. So for take AI tools example, the first launch of our uh, first AI tools is in last uh, October, last year's October. Now within China, there are already 20,000 of uh, suppliers is using these tools. And we launched these tools uh, outside China it's in actually all over the world this year. And the, the data shows that it's already 10,000 of uh, SMEs from all over the world is using these AI tools. And the top 20 countries, as I last checked, more than half of them is from developing countries. Pakistan, India, Vietnam, so these are, are the top countries that SMEs are leveraging the AI tools as much as possible. Right, so that is... Uh, about the innovation part. We want to kind of democratize all these AI tools, all these modern technologies to all the SMEs to make sure they can leverage the most out of that. And I think the third part is about the integration. So it's not only Alibaba. Actually, we cannot do everything by ourselves. We're participating with uh, ITC for the kind of incubation part. And also we are working with all these uh, bankings, all these logistic companies, and many of the ecosystem partners that we're doing together to make sure that the SMEs can both meet and work and trade on the digital platform. So that is what we do. Okay, so that's clear. So I wanted to perhaps come back to our entrepreneurs and, and revisit the question of international trade. So I think each of you have given some examples about customers uh, from around the world. Just how easy or difficult is that to be across cultures, across languages, um, and uh, um, across just business practices, for instance, to find those customers? Um, wh wh what are the barriers to making that possible, doing international trade? Pat, Steen, you have an example? Yeah, sure. So, um, for um, my uh, company, for my case, I don't have barrier of communicating uh, uh, with the f uh, foreign customers. Um, the only is uh, with, um, because I'm doing, um, you know, electronics. So electronics, we need certification in different countries, have different kind of requirement. So because I'm mostly in Asia, so I meet all the requirement in Asia. Just uh, some countries like Europe, like the like continent in Europe, you require some specific certification. Or in the uh, US, you need to require some specific uh, specification. So um, that I'm still learning how to incorporate that into my um, international trade strategy to um, so that my product is readily available for those continents. Um, without um, the analytics that I see on the e-commerce platform, I wouldn't know the demand for my product in those countries. So in order to make necessary um, investment for the certification for my product. 
Right, so it's introducing a very important thing about technical requirements in markets and this availability of information right. that we hear about. So there's an important knowledge component on this on any small business, some technical knowledge about how e-commerce works and the requirements, but some specific technical knowledge depending on the product. Yes, that, that, that you're right. So, um, Nupur, how does that work for you internationally? Because uh, you began the business uh, selling it internationally. Is that something from the beginning that's been uh, natural or did it require some specific learning on, on your part? Um, very well said, James. Actually, it specifically requires a lot of learning initially. But the, the most difficult part is to crack your first customer, to go on the right platform. Because uh, if you choose the right platform, then the customers also trust you. You also trust the customers that, okay, they're real. So, yes, and the language barrier, there are so many softwares now also and in back 20s also, like in 20 years back, 10 years back, there were so many, I think, um, plat and now they are coming up more and more. Now there's AI and um, there's so many apps now that you can remove that language barrier with the customers and then talk to them and make your sales. Right. So, so some of those cultural barrier, barriers can be addressed with tools, and we hope with the new AI yes. uh, capabilities, even more fluid. Uh, that while you're asleep, somebody yes. the AI can be uh, 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 answering your your orders. But what some of these technical barriers is that's also a case. We need any clearly electronic equipment that seems something special. But in something like handicrafts, are there also requirements for markets that you need to know about? Yes. So um, now as we are going up. So now certifications is a, is a thing that you can, we need to learn. But initially, logics, logistics was a big thing for us. We needed to learn that. Um, but for now, now for small SMEs who are starting, they need to see that, okay, this e-commerce and digit, going digital is not a uh, very difficult thing. It's not a technical thing that you cannot go online now. Every Like SMEs, if we give them one-to-one -one information and if we talk to them and, and like, Mr. Zhang said, told us that if, if we give them lectures and um, tell them about AI and many things, everyone can go easily online and they can very easily sell on the platforms, yes. Right. So, so we heard from uh, Mr. Zhang the importance of the, more, the services that marketplaces can provide. Uh, let's do, I'd just like to explore that a little bit more about, you know, market marketplaces versus doing this yourself because, I mean, you have a... You have a choice. You can set up your own e-commerce site. And more and more, I think, you know, 10, 20 years ago, I would have said, don't try. But now there are services that, that, that help you do that if you want. But we hear some of the advantages of, uh, of a market. How do you perceive that, the value of a marketplace versus doing yourself? Just, <laughs> Newport, let's start. Let's start. <laughs> you say? So, uh, going on the trusted platforms and doing e commerce yourself, starting up your uh, e commerce or website yourself, is a totally different thing. Right. For me, if you're going on the trusted platforms, then you're getting the buyers, buyers easily. Um, the platforms are working a lot with you to get those th that trust, those buyers for the logistics price. So, initially, when you're starting, you should go with the platforms. And once the once you're developed, and once you have your customer base, once you have your brand, you have you have money, then you can very well go go and establish your own e-commerce. Right. But initially, you should go with the trusted e just the trusted platforms. Are you doing that today? Do you have your yes. own site? Yes. Now I have started. Yes. To do that, and what are the problems with that? About having it, having a, your own platform, what do you have to look after? Now, especially getting back the replies from the customer, it is the initial, most initial problem. They don't trust us. We have still we have a good online presence. Okay. But they would prefer to come us through Alibaba or other or other platforms, e-commerce platforms, rather than coming to us from our website. Okay. Yes. What has that meant for you that you've had to do? The moment that you're in your own platform, what kinds of things have you had to, to, to also worry about in managing your own platform and your own payments, and your own logistics solutions? It is everything. Like we had, we had to see logistic solutions. We had to see the payment gateways. Uh, we had to see uh, the presence we are bringing online. 
because the platforms are already made, the e-commerce platforms, we have to make our own website. So the presence and plus the certifications, the, the certifications that, okay, we are doing ethical sourcing and there are many other things. So. Okay. All right. So these platforms are very competitive, like yeah. I mentioned earlier on. So you're in, you're in a marketplace, but you know, there's also the aspects of a marketplace. There are many competitors. Yes. Yeah. Is that something easy to live with? Uh, yeah, definitely, because, uh, you know, now, nowadays, we are in most of the platform in the world, like uh, Lazada, Miravia, uh, Alibaba.com, Amazon, uh, Timo Global, actually, we sell product to Chinese uh, directly, B2C, and actually, it's a very, very competitive market, but you can compete. I mean, we are manufacturers, so we can decrease prices. And actually, our products are made in Italy, so we have very, very high quality. And I think that uh, if you make people know it, then you will win their trust. Uh, so, yeah. Mm. And I think that uh, marketplaces, you know, are basically easier, faster and cheaper. Uh, yeah, because you don't have to make this big investment at the beginning to build uh, your own e-commerce platform and also on, in marketing. I mean, uh, the, this marketplace is all of them provide you with marketing strategies, the keywords, uh, so you know exactly which person uh, is looking for you and then you can easily meet them. But you have to follow the rules, you know, sometimes you get, you don't, yeah, in my, <laughs> in my products, I can't mention a disease or I can mention many things because I cannot sell medicine or drugs over the platform. So basically, yes, but I think platform are very useful at the beginning. Yeah. And people also trust the platform. Because, you know, people know that the platform makes some controls on over the buyer, so they trust. Uh, and they are like, uh, how we say in Italy, they are ready to buy on the platform. They come there with buying in their mind. Yes, and they know exactly what they right. want. So Okay. Stephen, your experience is like, reflect your experience. Yeah, it is pretty similar to what uh, Nupur and Maria has said. Um, but for, for my um, answer, I would like to use a little analogy. It's like uh, um, the platform is like a trade center in a good location. Um, and you, as a seller, you hire a small store inside that good location so that people can see you at that where traffic are and where people are already trusting that trade center to come and buy stuff. If you want to have a platform like that, a trade center like that, you have to invest you a lot of money, which is not cost efficient, right? So um, my so my strategic thinking is that it's better to go on the shoulder of a giant to accelerate rather than become a giant <laughs> yourself if, if you are a SME, right? So that is my um, simple answer. Okay, well, let me explore a counterfactual with you because... I because for years we've been coaching small businesses and uh, institutions to train on e-commerce and bring on a lot of small entrepreneurs. And going back a few years, I would have said exactly the same as you and I would have said, don't go anywhere near managing your own website. If you're small, it's going to require a lot of expertise that you simply don't have and it's going to cost you off. And you're going to have to worry about cybersecurity. You're going to have to worry about you know, simply hosting the website and paying for it every year which some small businesses in developing countries, that's, that's a problem for. But these, but the, there's another thing, this competition is so high sometimes, and sometimes the service levels can be so demanding on these platforms that if you're not ready for it, I say it's like jumping onto the, you know, the express route or the motorway, you get, you can get run over. So in some of our, you know, I change my advice a little bit and start saying, maybe you want to explore your own e-commerce platform. It's probably not going to change your life immediately because you've got a problem attracting customers or whatever. But you can learn a lot of lessons and you may be less visible, which has some benefits. You're not making a mistake in a, in a place, depending on where you are at in testing this because there are some platforms that can allow you to do that. You don't necessarily need to be programming or developing. What do you think? Is this nonsense advice or um, do you think, you know, testing e-commerce in a small way before you launch into a platform? Does that make any sense? Yeah, um, well, I can um, kind of answer this question in my own thinking is that um, 
in, in order to have my own platform, I can think of it as my own website, marketing my own product. Um, you can have more information on my website about technical stuff, or you can, um, you know, have more about our company on my website. But in order to bring a large amount of traffic, I don't think I can do that yet. Yeah, um, clearly. Because there are so many other um, platforms, giants that are, um, you know, that are very competitive with like the presence online. Because they, they are going, because they are very trustworthy, rather than they, they don't know me yet. Right. right. If I run my own platform, they don't know me yet. Um, how can they trust me? Um, but via a platform, they trust me. So this is usually, you know, this trust thing, we circulate around it because that's your key problem at the beginning. Nobody knows you, you right. don't have the size, you don't have the history. Right. But yeah, that's the problem that you're going to find. But, you know, learning lessons could be a bit, learning some technical lessons, sorting a few things out before you jump in. I, any comments? Yeah, yeah. Mm, I would like to answer because uh, actually it depends if you're talking about B2B or B2C. Yeah. I mean, if you're doing B2C, I think you can definitely do it and you can definitely learn. Uh, but you need to make some advertising, of course, because people don't know you. So basically, we are doing it uh, B2C because in Italy we have this very famous product, which is patented by one of the most important universities in Italy. So, uh, yes, if we are on top of the Google uh, and uh, we make this uh, Google advertising, then it can be good for starting because you know what people is looking for, uh, what they complain about. So maybe it's good because when you onboard the platform, uh, you already know what is wrong to do and what is not. Uh, so... Yeah, I think. Uh, and then also um, together with the platform, because sometimes it happens that the people uh, go to, from the platform to your own website and, you know, you can have the lead and you can make uh, marketing and uh, mailing marketing. Uh, so right. because, you know, the people and the leads now is the most important things to have. Okay. Any comment? So James, this was a very good advice. It's surely not a nonsense <laughs> advice. I also tell a lot of my, like I'm a trainer there, so I also tell a lot of women entrepreneurs that, okay, initially you should start with the platforms because that trust the customers, that is easy. You can find customers everywhere from there. And once that initial problems are solved, the, ca the capital issue, your inventory, your production, your uh, uh, freight, your logistics, everything, your office, everything is set up, then when you have spare, then you can start with your e-commerce and it should be there. It increases your brand visibility, it increases trust, it increases your own confidence. Okay, you are a, you are a company that owns her own website yeah. and, you know, so this is surely a great advice, but I would suggest not initially, you should have your customer base first and then customers trust. Then you, with the customers, you develop that kind of relationship that, okay, they're buying from you. So if you have that relationship with the, with the customers, okay, you should have your own e-commerce. Right, right. And you don't think it's a problem going online into marketplaces and making a mistake. I mean, making it visibly because, you know, this is this negative engine that kind of feedback. You did, the products were quite not the, quite the quality that they expected, which is a particular thing in handicrafts because yes. sometimes it can be yes. very individual. Yes. A customer is uh, disappointed for reasons they haven't understood or yeah. they were going to get. Mm -hmm. Is that not a problem? Because your bad reputation is then in a marketplace rather than having started and explored in some place where you manage. That's what I'm just saying. It's totally a point, yeah. I'm yeah, just right. saying, you know, if before I jump on the expressway, I try some back streets and knowing that I'm not going to maybe sell as much, but I learn, like, I, get my, I get my offer right, I get my relationship, I get those customers who expect before. <laughs> yeah, there's maybe a new way of doing things, yes. but, but I take it completely that where the customers are and uh, where the demand is, you have to go. I mean, and eventually as an entrepreneur, if you want to be successful, but the question is the route, the route there and the learning you, you have put in place. So come back a little bit to learning, but I want to address, excuse me, Stephen, the ladies mm -hmm. here and ask something about... Um, uh, the, are women in business and women in digital business in particular? We heard from Maria there was a particular cross-cultural misunderstanding yeah. <laughs> there that in some cultures they didn't expect a woman to be a leader of a business. 
is this as digital helps uh, overcome some of these things? Are there barriers that we should be thinking about about women in digital business? Um, women, uh, for digi going digital has really helped every woman, I think, because we have to manage both of the things sometimes, especially in India, we are managing home also and work also. Everything is together. So going digitally and going on e-commerce is the only way out that you can work through this and uh, get your get your uh, business up. It's not always a popular thing to say. The men in the room feel guilty <laughs> uh, that you have to leave this, but it's probably a, a simple truth. It, it but, was for me, actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, you have to combine professional and, and family life. Yes. And that's one good reason why digital uh, has been a breakthrough. It has been a boon. It has stuff. been everything. But beyond that, beyond this ability to combine traditional roles, um, has it helped your relationships uh, with commu you know, communicating across borders, uh, with being seen in a different way? Other perhaps may have been the case in a traditional business? Yeah, actually, maybe uh, the first start, uh, the company don't know if you, they speak to a woman. So <laughs> it's a yeah. point. Anyway, yes, for the women in our company, we, we did a lot because we have these flexible hours. And so they come back at 4 p.m. in the, so yes, the, like uh, she was saying, uh, we combine the family, but also for men, I mean, uh, yes. we don't make <laughs> yes, any distinction. Every employee come back home at four o'clock. But actually, yes, for digital, I think that um, maybe, yes, it can be helpful uh, because, you know, uh, it's very flexible. I think the women, uh, yes, can do it better in, in any way because, uh, you know, and also many companies now, they are running uh, by women, by women uh, in Europe. I have this Albanian partner and she was very happy that I am a woman, actually. So, Is there something that more that we should be doing now? You know, ITC itself has a major initiative about helping uh, uh, women succeed in business generally and not just uh, in, in digital business but is there something that we should be doing is it is it is it simply a matter of role models i mean we can present two successful role models here is that a major part of the story is there something else that we should be doing specifically to empower women in digital and e-commerce <laughs> I would say that like in the developing countries, still women are, they're, they're very intelligent, they're educated, but still they have a gap between the digital and uh, how to go online. Right now also there is a gap. So we can fill that gap and make them go online and go uh, make their passion into, a, into the convert, convert it into a business through e-commerce and digitalization. We need to have more and more uh, you know, awareness about that, okay, e-commerce, digitalization or AI is not very technical. You can do it and you can easily do it. Right. Have you benefited from, but, you know, bringing in Stephen as well, I yeah. benefited from any program which it helps uh, your, your success in any e comes either from uh, development organizations or, or private partners? Uh, for my case, I learned from you. The successful cases before me. Yeah. So, um, um, like Alibaba.com, they have uh, lecturers um, um, from around the world. Um, so, um, at first, before I even sell online, I have to go to the lessons to see how they sell and what are the successful uh, key points. Um, so I can learn from them and bring it back and apply it to my own company. And I have my own story to share to share back with the community. Yeah, so that is how at first I learned how to do an international trade. Nicole, any, any support programs that you benefited from? Um, actually, I would not say support programs, but the online, um, even ITC helped me a lot to see the data from all over the world that, okay, what products are, uh, are in need in particular countries mm -hmm. that we can export. Uh, I used to see the data and uh, other than that, um, YouTube and 
the programs on Alibaba. Yes, we go through that and then only we are able to uh, serve it better and go online better. Um, well, actually, I was one of the first to onboard it, for example, Alibaba.com. Uh, so I, I was one of the lecturers, <laughs> maybe. So actually, no, it was my idea. Actually, what I was suggested by my bank to enter the platform. There was this program, maybe you know about a bank in Italy that uh, proposed me to enter this platform. But actually, in Italy, there are, we care a lot about... Um, uh, export now, so there are a lot of programs like uh, the government uh, pay for you for um, uh, a digital uh, digital temporary export manager, so you can have it in your company. Then there is this organization called the Sachet CMS to make insurance for your uh, export revenue, and uh, yes, give you a map of the risk of uh, making uh, international trade. So yeah, there are a lot of programs also for building your own e-commerce platform or to onboard uh, another platform. They give you money and training. Maybe you should know about it. <laughs> it's money actually, and yes. Well, money and training. Those and also like marketing. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> money and training. Yeah, they care a lot about SME to go abroad and to make export. Also, you know, we have this marketing. They promote made in Italy. So both on Alibaba, there is this tradition on Amazon either. So yeah, they make a lot for SME for export. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I think what um, I've been hearing and learning from you is this importance of sharing uh, lessons. Sometimes that can be a simple inspiration of seeing some success and what success looks like from difficult beginnings of nearly being bankrupt and using digital to turn it around, developing a local business which which uh, provides great resilience uh, in a time of shocks such as we saw in COVID, it may not be the last, but discovering something together uh, that you can offer uh, uh, your, your employees uh, by growing a business in the kind of world that uh, they live in and the communities are that they live in, because I'm sure through your examples of using digital, you inspire a lot of positive things, people to apply similar tools and techniques in a different area. So I think this importance of learning and sharing is very important. And you are ambassadors for this. And thank you very much for coming here to Geneva and sharing uh, these important insights with us. And I hope it's not the last time we'll see you online and, uh, and learn some more from you. Uh, with that, I'd also like to turn back to Mr. Zhang and ask, so this area of, you know, partnership we hear is, it's very important. Uh, you've been showing us about the work that you do to uh, envisage uh, a journey uh, that small businesses can, can be supported and come online. But what could we, how could we support this? How could we work together um, uh, Alibaba, ITC, and others, uh, because the problems that we have to do to deliver the SDGs are considerable, and we all want to make partnerships work. So, how can we how can we do better? Do you think how can we do better, and how can we do more? Well, since uh, you know talking about the global trade, actually B two B is the mainframe of global trade. And SMEs actually the majority kind of major participant in the kind of B two B trade now. And as we see the though for the last twenty years, as we say that uh, the digital transformation is the number one thing that we say will reshape this world, but still the digital penetration for the global B two B is still single digit, as far as as we know. So there are still a lot of uh, local SMEs who can both go local and go global digitally. And we can actually uh, cover them or we can help them as much as possible. I think incubation together to make sure that they understand and they know how to leverage its tools and technology. I think that's the, the first important thing. And the second part is about the, how to lead by examples. So now we have served our customers, SMEs, over I think 200 countries globally. And there are many of the success kind of stories like this 
uh, ladies and gentlemen, entrepreneurs that we see everywhere, that we can help ambassadors in different kind of countries to make sure the people that can learn from them and lead by examples. And that I think that second is a very important thing. And the third is that it's not only kind of Alibaba, but we'll collaborate with a lot of other partners, other companies, like the platforms, like banking systems, like the kind of logistic companies, and in together, actually, we can build a more resilient and a more kind of a robust system together and to kind of cover more people and to help them to better transform for the digital area. I think, I think that is uh, all we can do together. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, hope that we can continue to work together uh, on this vision. Okay, thanks, James. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you.